Welcome to part two of the syllabus requirements. I wanted to review the final portfolio to make sure that we're clear on that, so please remember to hold on to the original copy of your workshop essay that you receive from me with my comments on it, because that's the one that you'll be turning in at the end of the semester with your revision, because I prefer to have my copy and that way I can, it helps me to remember what, um, what your what the comments were when I first read it when I have my notes beside of it. So hold on to that essay and then hand it in so your final portfolio will contain that copy of your essay, of your first essay and your second essay and then your revisions of both of those. So it'll be four essays total in that portfolio. We have several other policy requirements that I'd like to go over. One is academic integrity. When we start this class and when you accept this syllabus, you're accepting a contract and under that contract I am obligated to give you the best education that I'm capable of giving you and you are obligated to give me work that you say is yours so that I can measure that work by your progress throughout the term and according to a certain standard of honesty. If you give me work that is from high school or from your boyfriend or best friend or from the internet or from your mom um, any of these sources are not you and so if you pass any work that is not yours off as your own then that is plagiarism. I want to be clear about this definition of plagiarism if you take from the internet as little as three four words in a row, exact phrasing, the internet or a book from the library or a friend's old paper, one of your own papers. If you take a string of words that small, directly cite it, I mean directly word for word without citing it, then that is plagiarism. You're actually required to cite research in this class and so it really would behoove you to put that in quotations and to cite it. Um, as long, I mean, if it were from another source. If it was your own work from the past, hopefully you've grown but from however much time has passed since you wrote it before, and if it's someone else's work, then it's not yours. So you want to maybe give some uh, explanation, come talk to me about it. If someone gives you some really good ideas that you would like to include in your paper and you don't know how to do that officially, um, then come talk to me about it and we can figure out how to get appropriate documentation for those um, ideas based on that. But so if you do plagiarize, if you take work that from whatever source I've listed that isn't yours and you pass it off as your own and I find out, I catch you at it, it seems like the, it doesn't ring true um, to me or it sounds like another voice that you have or if I find it on Google or if I find it on um, send it, turnitin.com where they have vast um, numbers of essays electronically available to, for download and, and they match percentages um, with your essays to see if um, if there is a incidence of plagiarism in there. If I find out about the plagiarism then you will fail the course automatically, no questions asked. I We will have a conversation about it, I don't mean that, we, we will have a conversation about it, but you will fail the course because I can't trust the work that you hand in after that to be yours. And so I ask you to please take this responsibility very seriously of learning the information that I'm going to try to teach you in this course and that is available to you because that's what um, you're here for, I hope. And so if, um, if we need to have a conversation about that in more detail, if you have any questions about it, let me know. But otherwise, assume that you cite information that is not yours. And if you have any questions about how to cite it, we can go over that. But if you make a good faith effort to show that, that um, you recognize that that's not your work, then you'll not, you're not going to fail the class. You might get deducted on grade as the semester goes on if you haven't um, learned how to cite according to MLA. But you certainly won't fail it if you try to cite it in some way. Make it obvious that you know it's not your work. Um, high, of high importance in this class is attendance and participation. And so if you do miss class, understand that sometimes situations are unavoidable and you, you have to miss class, I do allow you to make up as much as three responses, um, three missed classes with responses to the reading. These responses are two pages, double spaced and typed and those are can be in lieu of your quiz grade. They don't make up for your participation grade 
um, wholly just because you have an absence in that place, but they can certainly repair the quiz grade. And so that you will want to, um, to do that to um, improve your grade if you do have an absence, if you do have to miss. If you miss more than, um, I have a number of classes. You miss more. Every class that you miss is going to cost you a little bit on your participation grade. Um, if you miss more than f five classes, you're you're going to be in danger of losing a letter grade or more in the in the class. The makeup responses are two pages double spaced typed, and they are critical or analytical responses rather than just summaries. You're going to investigate the the assignment according to a theme that I'll leave it up to you to to choose. I can come up with, I can help you formulate some questions if you'd like, but the specific nature of your close reading, um, I'd like you to figure out how to articulate your response to the reading, and so I don't want to specify that you have to respond to it in a certain way. I want you to find your way toward a close reading of texts, and so I leave you with a little bit of license to understand how to articulate that, how to find a thesis in the middle of it. One example might be if um, in Annie Dillard's Living Like Weasels, she divides the essay into six different sections. So you might look at why, why do you think she did that, and do a close examination of how the structure of that essay helps the content and how they relate to one another, for example. Um, in the responses, please include at least three quotations from the reading, um, a minimum of that, just because um, you'll need to respond. In a close reading, you'll need to give the examples of the text that you're, that you're reading closely um, for the reader to understand exactly what you mean and how you're reading something. It's just good practice for scholarship. Late assignments cost one letter grade to, um, beginning 10 minutes afterwards. So if you turn in an essay, say the essay is due at 10 o'clock uh, in class on Wednesday, and you come in at the very end of class and you you know give me the essay and you know even though it's only that hour that we have been sitting in class it already counts as one full day that's late and so you might as well hold on to it and keep working on it for that the rest of that day and then turn it in later you can stop the clock by emailing the essay to me um, and so you, you want to do that and stop the um, time from counting anymore, but I do need a paper copy of all of the assignments that you turn in. Um, special needs, we have any student who has a disability um, that may affect his or her academic performance is encouraged to make an appointment with me to discuss the matter or to contact Disability Services, and the phone number is available on your syllabus. Um, we also have the Academic Affairs, and they have um, academic support is available online. If you have any special needs for the classroom for instruction, please go through the, the Center for Academic Affairs in order to best handle your needs. There's a policy on minors or for children in the class, classroom. They're not allowed under any circumstances to accompany um, students, anyone under 18, for legal, for legal reasons. Your midterms are available upon request. Um, you can come and make an appointment with me and we can, we can talk about those. Um, I will leave it up to you to be proactive about making that appointment. And the final thing that I would like to say is that you need to turn off your cell phones before you enter class because they're disruptive. Um, also, you need to turn to um, get to class on time. A late um, showing up late for class twice counts as an absence in the sense that it counts as a zero in your participation grade and so that's going to pull your grade down so please make an effort to show up on time just that way we can go ahead and begin our discussions and begin the conversation without being interrupted the same applies for leaving early leaving early twice counts as an absence counting as a zero for that for that day um, if you have any questions about any of these policies please send me an email otherwise Please look at the course schedule and see that on Wednesday we're going to listen to a Words um, Radio Lab episode. So that'll get you practiced at the um, technology. I'll help you with that, and so that we can figure out how the Radio Lab essays work. And we'll just um, we're going to play a game so that I can help. I can learn your names, and you can learn each other's names. And then we've got a reading from um, the in short book 
on Friday. David Huddle's museum piece is in here. And so that will be due, the readings are due on the day that they're assigned. And so you'll have a quiz on Friday on David Huddle's museum piece, and that will be your first quiz of the year. And so if you, if anything doesn't make sense, please let me know. And if you want to know more about the, um, any of the information contained on the syllabus, then please send me an email. Otherwise, I'll meet you all in person on Wednesday, and I really look forward to it. We're going to have a great semester. Thanks. Bye.